What's going on everybody? My name is Scott Simpson. I'm a number one best-selling author and co-founder of FastBestSeller.com where we teach people just like you how to become best-selling authors very, very quickly. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can go to the link in the description below, FastBestSeller.com and check all of that out there. Lots of great information. Today I'm going to talk to you about binding your book, the different kinds of bindings and what you need to know about book binding. Book binding, very important. Um, the reason that book binding is important is because there are different price points associated with different types of binding. Your paperbacks are usually going to be a little bit cheaper than your hardcovers, and your spiral bounds can be cheaper or more expensive than both. Uh, there's audio versions. Technically, that's not a binding, but it's just another method of getting your book out there. So I want to go over some of the logistics, some of the ins and outs of book binding, so that way you understand what will be best for you. The first type of book binding I want to go over is your hardcover book binding or case laminate. So there's a couple different types of, of hardcover book binding. The first is your cloth covered book binding where you have a hardcover book that's covered in a cloth type material. And that's most of your like traditional novels are that way um, uh, or uh, nonfiction hardcover books are that way and they'll come with like a dust jacket around them. And it makes for a very elegant looking book, a very nice looking book, and you can charge a premium for that, uh, for, for the, you know, the nicer look. Hardcover books can be priced anywhere from, um, from $19.99 on up to hundreds of dollars for like a school textbook, for example. So the hardcover just gives it that, that, that boost of class, that boost of character, the boost of quality that will make your book look and feel a lot nicer. So just take that into consideration. Cloth is usually reserved for your traditional books, books that we buy in the bookstores. The other type is, a, is what's called case laminate and that's where there's a picture that's actually printed on the cover. It's nice, glossy, wraps all around the cover and it's um, um, and that's usually something for like a children's book or a, uh, a, a textbook something along those lines. So just factor that into the equation when you are looking at different types of binding for your book. Just make sure you think about that. What will look the best? Take a look at what other people are doing. The next type of, of binding is a, a perfect bound or soft cover. And again, I'm sorry, I got something in my eye today. Jeez. Um, soft cover, perfect bound is something that you would do for a mass market book. A lot of big name authors, they'll publish first in their hardcover and then they'll publish six months, a year later in the mass market paperback, sometimes right away in the mass market paperback. So that way there's uh, people have the option of spending more expensive for the quality hardcover book or they can just buy the cheaper version. And uh, so take that in consideration. There's a strategy that can go along there. If you want to drive more people to the more quality type of book, then you want to start by publishing a hard copy. If you don't mind, then um, just publish in, in the perfect bound or the paperback is the way that it's called. Uh, so just think about that. There's a strategy behind it. And mass market paperback or just perfect bound books, they can be priced anywhere from um, $4.99, $6.99 on up to $20, $25. I've seen some books, some paperback books priced as high as $30 for just a, a standard nonfiction book. It just it depends on the quality of your book, the content of your book, and the perceived uh, value of your book. So it doesn't really matter the way that you publish it. You can you can um, create a perceived value around your book and uh, and price your books at however w wherever you want. Perfect Bound is generally a little bit cheaper to produce, so it costs you less to produce, and so your margins can be a little bit greater. Although when looking at, you know, comparing both Perfect Bound and soft cover, I mean hardcover and soft cover, um, because of the higher price point of the hardcover, the, the margins, you know, it's really up in the air. It's just all in the pricing where your margins are going to be. The next type of, of binding that I want to talk about is your wire stitching. And that can be either side stitching or saddle stitching. Side stitching is where you just you basically take a you know your book 
and, and staple down the side. Saddle stitching is when you staple down the crease. And you'll see a lot of the children's books, mass market, paperback, are going to be with that saddle stitch or that staple in the center of the, um, of the spine. Uh, and that's good for like pamphlets and little manuals and things like that. I wouldn't recommend doing that for a large book. That you, you really you can't. But um, it's good to know for little pamphlets. And, and it can be, you know, can really look quality if you do it right. And the last type of binding I want to talk to you about today is your spiral bound or your plastic comb. And this is kind of a, a hidden secret in the publishing industry, especially if you're a coach or a, a presenter, a speaker, and you have ma materials that are in the form of a manual or a, uh, a guidebook or workbook, things like that. Because even though it looks, it might look a little bit cheaper to have a uh, spiral bound or to have that plastic comb, those can actually uh, indicate or be perceived as more valuable because people are getting a workbook. They're getting something that is meant to be opened, kept open for a long period of time, written and drawn in. And so you can actually charge a premium for that. Believe it or not, you can charge more for it. I've seen some of these spiral bound manuals go for hundreds of dollars. I've actually paid hundreds of dollars for manuals that were in spiral bound notebooks, not specifically because they were spiral bound or comb bound, but just because they give that perception of this is a workbook, this is a study manual. So keep that in mind when you're writing a book too. If you're writing something that is that can be turned into a manual, um, you might want to look into that because you can charge a little bit more the, uh, and the margins will be way higher. So just think about that. So I hope you learned some things today. I've talked to you about all the different types of bindings, or at least a few of them, uh, enough to get you started on book publishing, give you some ideas of what will work for you. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section. If you like more information about this or how to become a best-selling author, go to fastbestseller.com because we've got a lot of great information there. Some free, some paid. Uh, everything is valuable. So take a look at that. All right, have a fantastic day. Look forward to talking to you again. Bye.